In this video, I'll be sharing with you my 10 best tips to improve your lighting in Blender. So tip number one might be pretty obvious, but that's to use HDRIs for more realistic lighting and reflections. So if you take a look at things in the real world, everything has some amount of reflections, especially things like shiny plastic, metal, and glass. So if you're just taking a look at a mug, for example, you might notice that you can actually see yourself in the reflection, and it also is reflecting the table and the wall and different things around the room. And so that's why HDRIs are so helpful for improving your lighting and your realism because if you add an HDRI into your scene it's going to add lots of different colors and different things for your objects to reflect. Now there are some different websites online where you can purchase HDRIs, but an amazing free resource is polyhaven.com where you can download lots of free HDRIs and they're all licensed as Creative Commons Zero. Now HDRIs are a pretty large file size and so especially if you're using a really high quality HDRI, like a 16K version, then that's going to be a really large file size and it will actually make your render slower. But most of the time when all you need is some realistic lighting or reflections, you don't actually need that high quality of an HDRI. So when I'm downloading an HDRI from Polyhaven, I usually just download the 1K version and the HDR version, and so that's going to keep the file size of the HDRI a lot smaller, and it will make your renders faster. And tip number two is similar to using HDRIs, but that is to use the Easy HDRI add-on. So this is an amazing free HDRI add-on, so you can use my affiliate link and download the add-on for free with the link in the video description. You can also help support the creator and add a few dollars into the tip box on Gumroad. And then once you set up the add-on, you can select your HDRI folder, and then when you click on the add-on settings, it's going to show you all your different HDRIs. So you can quickly just jump between all your different HDRIs, so if you don't really know what lighting you're going for, you don't really know what lighting would look good in your scene, you can just quickly switch between the HDRIs by clicking on the arrows, or you can also click on the little dice icon to pick a random HDRI, or just click on the HDRI and choose between different HDRIs. So this is an amazing way to quickly change the HDRIs and kind of change up your lighting, and that way you can quickly find a result that you like. Now tip number three is to use some sort of customizable sky add-on. And some great add-ons that I've used are the Pro Atmo add-on and also Physical Starlight and Atmosphere. And I have add-on review videos on my channel on how to use both of those add-ons. If you want to check that out, link is in the video description. So these sky add-ons basically create a sky HDRI to help with realistic lighting. But why these add-ons can be so much more useful than HDRIs is because they are customizable. So HDRIs are a static image and you can't really customize or change the HDRI that much. However, using a sky add-on like Pro Atmo or Physical Starlight and Atmosphere, you can customize different things like you can customize the sky color, you can also customize the time of day, so you can have it be noon or midday or evening or morning, and you can move the sun around to change where the lighting is. You can also change different things regarding the weather, so for example more of a cloudy day or a foggy day, or you can also change the amount of clouds and the type of clouds. And these sky images also look really nice in the background of your renders, so if you're creating like a sky render, they can look really nice as well. Now, as well as using paid add-ons, Blender also has some built-in HDRI skies. And I'll have a link in the video description to another video which I created showing you how to use some of Blender's built-in sky HDRIs. And you can get some pretty cool results with Blender's built-in sky HDRIs as well. And tip number four is to use a basic three-point lighting system as a guide when you're first setting up your lighting. And the three-point lighting system can especially be useful when rendering props or characters. So with a three-point lighting system, you have a backlight, which can sort of act as a rim light to kind of separate the object from the background. Then you also have the key light or the main light, which kind of just lights up the object. And I usually like to have that light somewhere kind of on the side, but still generally towards the front of the character. And then there's also a a fill light which you can use just to fill in some of the dark shadows so the shadows aren't too dark. And you can use some different lights in Blender to set this up. I usually like using area lights when I'm setting up a three-point lighting system. But then of course, after you set up a three-point lighting system, you can totally change the lights. You can move the lights around. You can change the brightness. You can also add more lights. You don't just have to have three lights. But if you don't really know how to set up your lighting in Blender, you could just start with a basic three-point lighting system and you can tweak it from there. And I also created a video on how you can track lights to objects. So that way you can just select a light and move the light around your object. And the light is always going to point towards your object, so if you want to check out that video, link is in the description. Now tip number five is to use the right type of light. So in Blender, there's quite a few different types of lights, so you can actually add an object with an emission material and that will actually emit light, but you can also use the object lights like a spotlight, an area light, a sunlight, or a point light, and something else that you can do is you can basically create a bounce 
light by bouncing a light off of a plane. And in the real world, that's what I'm actually doing right here in my room. So I have a little studio light, but instead of shining the light directly at my face, I actually have it pointed straight up. So it's kind of bouncing off of the walls and bouncing off of the ceiling. And that way it does add some nice light, but it's not super sharp. So it's a little bit more of a soft light. So the spotlight is really good for creating like a theater light or a stage light or a search light. The area light, I would say is just like a general light, which you can use for lots of different things. So it's just going to be basically a plane, which is going to emit light. Then the sunlight is really good for creating environment renders because it's going to emit an even amount of light all over your scene. And then the point light is great for creating smaller lights. For example, things like a light bulb or maybe a desk lamp where light is coming out all around in a circle. Or you could also have light bounce off of like a white plane as that would create a nice soft light. And there's lots of different settings for each light. So you can like change the temperature to make it more of a warm light or more of a cool light. You can also change the color. You can really make the lighting look really abstract by making it really vibrant colors. Or you can just add a slight color change just to make it look more unique. You can also change the power and the exposure. And you can also change the radius of the light to make the shadows more sharp or less sharp. Now tip number six is to make sure you don't use too many lights. Often when you're doing lighting, less is more. So for example, if you want to light up a character or a prop or something, so you just like take a bunch of lights and duplicate them and move them all around the object because you want to light everything up so you can see the entire character or prop, then that's actually going to get rid of a lot of shadows and you're not really being very intentional with your lighting. Whereas if you just add a couple of lights, there's going to be some really strong lights in some areas and then some dark shadows in some other areas. And when you're doing lighting, shadows are just as important as light areas because shadows help to actually show the shape of the object. So if you duplicate a bunch of lights around an object and just light it up so that it's light all over, then there aren't really that many shadows. So it's actually going to be harder to see the shape of the object in the final render. So just remember as you're lighting that shadows are just important as lights and just make sure you don't use too many lights. If you're finding that you have a light in your scene, but it's really not adding much to the scene, then I would say just delete it. Now tip number seven, I did talk about briefly earlier, but that is to add rim lights. And rim lights are especially helpful on props and characters they're not that useful for creating like environment lighting but they're really useful for rendering props or characters because they really pop out the character from the background by adding kind of that light or that highlight on the very edges and they also help to show the silhouette or the shape of your prop or character so when i'm adding a rim light i usually like to add an area light and then you can also take the shape and you can change it to a rectangle and then you can change the size and make it a really nice long light you could also change the type to ellipse and then you can change up the size of it and then just place it on the back of your character and make it kind of a strong light and so that's going to add a nice rim light to the background of your character and so it's just going to light up kind of the edges now tip number eight is to use light gobos and so light gobos are basically realistic shadow patterns so for example if you have maybe an outdoor scene and you want to like render some things but make it look like it's in a forest you could use a light gobo and so you could use a light gobo which has little twigs and leaves and things and it's going to make it look like light is shining down from the forest. You could also use light gobos to make it look like light is shining through a window or shining through window blinds. So light gobos could really improve the realism and interest of your renders. And so if you want to learn how to create light gobos in Blender, then I do have a tutorial which you can check out. And I also have a light gobo asset pack product, which comes with a bunch of different light gobos and they're pre-set up in Blender's asset browser. So you can just drag and drop the light gobos into your scene. And so that'll add a light into your scene. And then you can just pose it and customize it and you can place it in your scene. And tip number nine is to use some sort of color management other than the standard color management. So if you go to the color management tab on the render properties you can change the view transform so there is a standard type but I wouldn't recommend using the standard type because the standard types exposure is actually pretty small and so very light things can actually start to look blown out and it just doesn't look that realistic so I'd recommend either using the AGX view transform or the filmic view transform now in blender the default view transform is AGX so that's fine you can just use AGX I personally like to use filmic most of the time because I I find using AGX, a few of the colors just look a little bit weird. So I like using Filmic better, but AGX and Filmic will both work fine. And then as well as using the color management, you can also change the look. And usually I like to go for something like high contrast or very high contrast, and that's going to pop out the colors and make everything in the scene a little bit more contrasted and a little bit more saturated. And you can also do custom color correction to your scene by just turning on the curves option. So if you turn on the curve options, you can choose between the color, the red, the green, and the blue and so you can basically use this feature to do color grading in your scene. 
And tip number 10 is to customize the shadow sharpness with your light. So for example, when using something like a point light, you can go to the light settings and you can change the radius. And so the radius is going to make the light bigger or smaller. Now if the light is very small, you can see it's still putting out the same amount of light, but the shadows are much sharper. And so that's because the light is coming out of a very, very small area. Or if you scale it up, you can see that circle around the light is getting bigger. And so that's actually going to make the shadows a lot more soft. And that's because there's lots of light coming out different areas. And so it's gonna make the shadow way more soft. And a really great example that I always like to use is a sunny day and a cloudy day. So on a sunny day, the shadows are really sharp. If you just go outside on a sunny day and look at your shadow, it's usually quite sharp. However, on a cloudy day, there's lots of light being spread out around the clouds. So the clouds are sort of acting like a filter to make the light nice and soft. So on the light settings, you can keep the radius higher for more of a soft light, or you can turn the radius down for more of a sharp light. Now with the sunlight, there is the angle. So on the sun settings, you can change the angle up and down and on the spotlight you can also change the radius to change the sharpness and softness of the light and with the area light you can change the spread so you can turn the spread up and down to make it sharper or softer so depending on the mood of your scene and the time of day and type of light that you're going for you can make more of soft lights or sharp lights so those are my 10 best tips on improving your lighting in blender so i hope you found the video helpful and thank you for watching